previously, we explored 17 big country hits that another artist passed on before it became a hit. You got to know when to hold up, know when to fold up. But now... Now we get to tell the stories of songs that were flat out ripped out of another artist's hands. You've been looking forward to this, haven't you, Billy? Well, I alluded to it before when we were talking about Zac Brown Band's Chicken Fried, a song that is critical to one of the all-time great country thefts. We'll get there. Hey, it's Addison Hager, and I'm going to begin with an equally famous song from the 2000s. This one started the career for Joe Nichols. The Impossible is a tremendous song, but it should have been a hit for a veteran hit maker. Right. Let's let Joe Nichols tell the story of finding out that by recording this song, he'd really upset Mark Chestnut. He's like, and he pulled him aside on the elevator. He's like, I want you to know that was some straight BS with that song. And I was like, whoa, what are we talking about? He goes, yeah, I cut that song. I had it cut and I had it ready to go on my album. And your uh, your label, uh, my, the publisher of that song, pulled it out from underneath me and gave it to you last minute. And you guys cut it. I'm like, I had no idea. Mark, I didn't try to undercut you or anything with a song. I had no idea anybody even eyeballed it. They told me it was brand new. What I like about that story is Joe was just this cocky kid with a good voice at the time, and Mark Chestnut, he didn't care one bit. We should mention, though, at the end, Mark understood, and he didn't really blame Joe. Do you think that's true about the song George Strait got from Johnny Paycheck? I love this story. When George started out back in the early 80s, his label had no faith in him. They signed him to a one-song record deal, meaning he needed a hit. Dean Dillon had one, but he wanted it to go to Johnny Paycheck. The problem was, Johnny was in jail, so while he was eating off a tin plate and going to the bathroom with spectators, George made a hit single with Unwind. That woman that I had wrapped around my finger just come And the rest is country music history. Do you have anything more contemporary? Oh yeah, for sure. In 2014, Sam Hunt started his career by saying a song he wrote was stolen from him and has never really answered for that accusation. It happened when Keith Urban took the song to the Grammy Awards that year. Here's what Sam tweeted on January 27, 2014. I worked hard on Cop Car. Everything I poured into that song was stolen from me. I unfortunately can't celebrate it being on the Grammys. The most uncomfortable part about this is that Keith and Sam are label mates, and Keith made Sam a ton of money by making it a hit. Sam wrote that based on his own love story, so, you know, it was personal. I call these kind of things unforced errors, and unfortunately, Sam has more than a few in his career. Another video, Billy. Another video. But hey, I would like to take a second to ask those watching to consider subscribing. We're having a ton of fun starting these list conversations. Give a thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself right now. Now that that commercial break is over, let's talk about artists that turned so-so versions of a song into something much bigger. The most obvious is this all-time great song. You got to know when to hold up. Know when to fold up. That's Kenny's song, but at least two other huge hit makers took a crack at it. Bobby Bear released it, but it never caught on. And then Johnny Cash took a try. You gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Three more songs we'll add to the sub list is Colin Baton Rouge, a number two hit for Garth Brooks. The Oak Ridge Boys cut it about 11 years prior. Reba McIntyre's signature song is fancy, but Bobby Gentry wrote and recorded it decades earlier. And we discussed this during our video of songs artists passed on, but Chris Stapleton's version of Tennessee Whiskey is better than all others. Man, you're opening up a can of worms there, Addison. I don't disagree with you, but let's let the people speak. Two more. But if we're missing one, let us know in the comment section. We're totally willing to turn in part two of this video. The first one we'll get to is disputable. I've got nothing but hearsay to indicate that Mark Chestnut was angry about Garth Brooks turning friends in low places into hip before he could. Well, we know Mark Chestnut isn't afraid to confront a guy. Neither is Zach Brown, apparently. Okay, this is your story to tell. Have at it. And a little bit of chicken fried. Cold beer on a Friday night. I was on the radio as a DJ in Raleigh, North Carolina when it happened, so it's all really fresh. Zach wrote Chicken Fried with Wyatt Durrett, and he told this group called The Lost Trailers that they could record it for their album, but they couldn't release it to the radio. 
This is in 2005, soon after the Lost Trailers signed with Sony Records. And what do they release as their very first single? Chicken Fried. Zach is ticked. So we lawyers up and radio stations all across America start to get cease and desist orders. Sony's head honcho at the time was this really powerful man named Joe Galante. In fact, he's in the Country Music Hall of Fame now. Zach's lawyer tells Zach that he's going to get thrown out of Nashville before he's even allowed in, but Zach sticks to his guns. Eventually, he signs a record deal and releases Chicken Fried on his own in 2008. I guess you could say that song was stolen twice. Real question, can you go to jail for stealing something that's yours? You know, Billy, why don't you try it and let us know? <laughs> I'm Addison Hager for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video. And as always, thanks for subscribing.